So I think everyone wants to live a little bit longer. I will guarantee at the end of this video, you are going to know how to extend your life. And I'll put a guarantee on that to the point where I'll even give your money back if you don't live longer. So if we want to figure out how to extend one's life, we need to compare that to something else. You can never figure something out or understand something if it's just like one thing. Like, for example, if I said, uh, is the number 100 good or bad, right? It has to be related to something. For example, if your blood sugars are 100, is that good or bad? Well, normally it should be like 80, okay, or maybe even a little bit less. So 100 is not that great. Okay, what about temperature? Is that good or bad? Well, you have to evaluate that compared to your normal temperature, which is 98.6. So 100, yeah, it's uh, it's a bit too high. So in order to figure out longevity, we have to compare that to the reason why people die and, and look deeper at the risk factors, potential causes, etc. Because if we could just eliminate why people die, we can extend your life that way without knowing anything else, okay? Well, I'll just tell you right now, the number one cause of death worldwide is heart attacks. Now, in this graph that I'm going to pull up right now, it shows the greatest risk factors for dying from a heart attack, okay? Take a look at this. And we're looking at the graph on the left side, heart disease. Uh, we have various risk factors, okay? We have hypertension, we have smoking, we have obesity, okay? Then we have aging. So look at how much greater aging is as a risk factor for heart disease. But what we're really looking at is the deaths from heart attacks. So based on that, do we have enough information to know how to live longer? Because all we know now is the biggest factor for heart disease death is aging. And we know that the greatest uh, cause of death is heart disease death. So what we need to do is we need to look a little bit more at heart disease itself. Let's look at some statistics on heart disease. I have this very interesting uh, graph showing the risk factors for coronary heart disease as well as the uh, biomarkers. And biomarkers are just like little red flags, which just tell you the risk of getting a heart attack. Now, what's so important about this graph is to look at the relative uh, differences between the different risks. And if we look at the top graph, let's just take a look at type 2 diabetes. If you have diabetes, you're at more of a 10 times risk of developing heart disease than people that don't have diabetes. And if we look at the biomarkers, specifically insulin resistance, okay, now you're probably wondering what lipoprotein insulin resistance is. That's a kind of a fairly new but very reliable uh, biomarker of uh, insulin resistance. Look at insulin resistance compared to what everyone focuses on is the LDL as a risk factor for heart attacks the so-called bad cholesterol. Now, I'm not going to even get into like the small, dense particle size versus the large, buoyant size, none of that. I'm just looking at LDL cholesterol. We're going to compare that to insulin resistance as a risk. So if we look at the numbers for LDL, it basically has a risk factor of 1.3. That means if you have a higher LDL, that can put you at a risk factor of 38% more risk. Okay, now 38% sounds like a big risk, right? But let's compare that to insulin resistance, which increases your risk by 540%. So if we're looking at the relative importance or focus or attention that you should put on preventing heart attacks, what would be a bigger number? 540% or 38%? The insulin resistance biomarker is 14 times greater than LDL. And if we look at it a percentage, it's 13% hundred percent greater. And this blows me away because I don't even know if doctors even can look at insulin resistance as a biomarker or risk factor at all. It's mainly focused on this cholesterol value or uh, bad cholesterol. Now, if we look at the top graph, the graphs in red, diabetes is caused by insulin resistance. Then the second one, metabolic syndrome. What causes that? Insulin resistance. Then we have hypertension. What's behind that? insulin resistance. What about diabetes? What causes that? Insulin resistance. And then what about smoking? Is insulin resistance involved in smoking? It actually does contribute to insulin resistance in a big way. It actually can elevate your blood sugars, and I'll put that data down below too. 
So by looking at all the, these risk factors and biomarkers and evaluating the relative importance, apparently insulin resistance happens to be the biggest risk factor for premature cardiac deaths. Now that's interesting, but there's something even more interesting about this topic. Um, what is the main mainstream treatment for high cholesterol? And if you said statins, you guessed correct. What's a statin? It's a drug that blocks the production of cholesterol in the body. And when we're done with this video, go ahead and go to Google and just type in statins related to insulin resistance. And you're going to find that right down the list, there are many, many studies showing that when people take statins, they can develop insulin resistance and even diabetes. So the very treatment to prevent a heart attack could end up worsening a heart attack. Why? Because of insulin resistance. Anything that increases insulin resistance is not a good idea when you're trying to prevent a heart attack. It's data that you should bring up with your doctor. You should educate your doctor about this because sometimes um, there's so hyper-focused on this one bad cholesterol, they might not be up on some of this current data. Now, when we talk about longevity, we want to keep the mitochondria as strong as possible. Okay, We don't want the mitochondria to die. Uh, one of the reasons the mitochondria dies uh, and even can shorten your life uh, is a term called apoptosis. Okay, Apoptosis is uh, cell death. And when we're talking about the mitochondria, it's the death of the mitochondria. Well, apparently statins also impair the mitochondria and increase this apoptosis. Now, the other thing you should know about statin drugs, and I'm, again, I'm not telling you to come off your statin drug. I'm just giving you the information to be able to research and bring this up with your doc. But it's a well-known fact that statins deplete coenzyme Q10, which has everything to do with helping you transport um, electrons in the mitochondria. They're involved with generating more energy uh, or ATP in your body. And when someone takes a statin and they become depleted of coenzyme Q10, they can develop a lot of, um, they're called statin-induced myopathies, which is muscle diseases like weakness of the muscle, atrophy of the muscle, uh, muscle pain, muscle cramping, and other problems with the muscle. And this is why anyone on statin should always, always, always take coenzyme Q10. And what's more ironic, just about coenzyme Q10 as a nutrient, guess what food that you find it mostly in? Beef liver, fatty fish, you know, things with uh, more cholesterol. Now, let's just talk about this cholesterol thing a little bit because I think that um, people are really afraid of cholesterol. And of course, they want to keep their cholesterol low so they can live longer. However, there's some data that you need to know about cholesterol. And if this surprises you, I'm going to put the link down below so you can thoroughly study this. This is not a weak study. It's a very strong study, which basically links LDL cholesterol to inversely affecting mortality. That means when your LDL is low, you don't live as long as if the LDL is higher. When LDL is higher, this can extend your lifespan. This is probably new information for you. Uh, that's why you should uh, get the information for yourself down below. Now, why would this be true, especially as someone ages? Because cholesterol is involved not just in nerve transmission, not just in the production of vitamin D, not just in the production of bile to help you extract and absorb vitamin A, D, E, K1, and K2, but it's also involved in making hormones, especially testosterone, especially estrogen, and cortisol, the hormone that we need to counter stress and get rid of inflammation. And the more inflammation you have, the more even infection that you might have, uh, you may find your cholesterol going up to help you heal that tissue or provide raw material for your body to work better. So if you just think about like why even cholesterol would end up in the arteries, it's part of the healing process. As someone ages, especially if someone is female going after menopause and she starts lowering her cholesterol, boy, the hormones just kind of tank. So cholesterol is really needed in all of the sex hormones and also cortisol and other hormones as well. Not to mention you need cholesterol in all of your cell membranes. 
The great majority of your cholesterol is actually made by your own cells for a reason. And so when we start cutting down the production of cholesterol, it comes with side effects. And one of the big side effects with statins is increasing more insulin resistance, the biggest risk factor for heart disease. Since we're on the topic of cardiovascular disease, many people are not just on statins, they're on blood thinners. All of those medications also contribute to insulin resistance and increased insulin and increased blood sugars. On top of the heart healthy diet that's recommended by the American Heart Association, which is fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and lean meats. Well, I want to comment on the fruits first. A while ago, I was eating what I thought was healthy, and I was eating fruits like apples through the day, and I was eating a lot of other things that I'm still eating, but all I did was cut out the apples, which is so high in sugar. And that sugar is not just glucose, it's fructose too. After I cut these apples out, I went from my face being round to more slender. I went from a weight that was 211 pounds to a weight that's 185 pounds. And that's what I weigh now. I'm 6'2". So fruit <laughs> is so sweet. Unfortunately, you're just going to raise your blood glucose and raise your insulin. Not to mention the fructose going to the liver and creating insulin resistance from a different angle. All right, what about lean proteins, right? Lean meats. Well, guess what? There's something called the insulin index, and the, the proteins that are more lean, like even whey protein, which is completely just protein and no fat at all, are the highest on the insulin index. That means they trigger insulin the most. And the proteins that are the fattiest trigger insulin the least. This is why if you're going to eat an egg, you eat the whole egg, not the egg white. This is why when you eat chicken, you want the, the skin on it. This is why when you eat uh, meat, you don't want to buy the leanest meat. So it can protect you against this insulin problem, just as fiber can protect you against carbohydrates. So if you were to eat um, like a carrot, for example, uh, you have a lot of fiber in there that protects you against that sugar. This is also why vegetables are really good because they're very low in sugar and very, very high in fiber. And of course, when we get to the whole grains, don't get me started on that topic because the grains will just increase your blood sugars, regardless of them being whole grain or refined grain. And very, very unfortunately, they're even now putting children on statin drugs with no long-term safety studies. It's tragic. So insulin resistance is the most important risk factor for heart disease. And if you want to live longer, all you have to do is improve insulin resistance. Make your insulin more sensitive, less resistant, stabilize your blood sugars. That is the most important action out of anything you can do. So how do you do it? The biggest way is to start going low carb. That is called the ketogenic diet. Then you implement uh, intermittent fasting. Cut out the snacks. Go to two carbs a day. Number three, don't try to go lean with your proteins. Don't try to lower your cholesterol. Don't be afraid of cholesterol in your natural foods like eggs, meat, cheese, things like that. Remember, as you age, that LDL is inversely proportioned to mortality. So the people with really low LDL don't live as long. And you need this cholesterol as raw material to build your hormones and heal the body, especially when you're sick and especially as you age. Now, as far as the vegetables go, of course, you need to include that in the diet. It's going to be loaded with potassium and magnesium, two key minerals that can help this insulin resistance problem as well as the fiber in those vegetables feeding the microbes to make what's called uh, small chain fatty acids that indirectly improve your blood sugars and insulin resistance. Exercise as an action can greatly improve insulin resistance. So the combination of all these things I just mentioned will guarantee that you definitely live longer or I will give you your money back. Oh, that's right. This information was free. So please pass this information on, share it to a loved one, and for those of you that are new to my channel and you don't know where to start, I put that video up right here. Check it out.